Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, forget that. What's up, guys? I'm Random Frank P. And today I'm pretty pumped because we're going to be kind of upgrading my main PC, you know, the, the rig you see behind me, with the ASUS ROG Strix 2080 Ti in all white. This edition came out around the holidays, I'm pretty sure. So finally got my hands on it. It's gonna fit in perfectly with the build. We have a white motherboard as well, a new AIO. So I figured why not give it a little bit of a facelift, you know? And also we're gonna be going vlog style for this video because I haven't done a vlog in a long time. Uh, so I figured, you know, why not? Got a new mic I'm testing as well. But first, a message from our sponsor. This video is sponsored by ASUS, powered by NVIDIA GeForce RTX. Get your foot in the door with next-gen graphics and performance with dedicated ray tracing cores in the AI-powered DLSS 2.0 and watch your games come to life. I know my nephews have been going on and on about how cool Minecraft RTX looks with ray tracing enabled, and it really does make a graphical difference for those who want that extra eye candy in-game. The lighting, reflections, and just the general atmosphere in-game all get that next-gen bump. Powered by NVIDIA Turing, ASUS and their 20 series RTX graphics card lineup provides not only the most advanced GPU architecture for gamers, but also reliability as ASUS graphics cards are manufactured through an auto extreme process that's 100% automated. What does that mean for you? Well, they're not made by hand, so in the end, there's a stricter quality inspection and control process, giving your PC the edge in reliability. If you want to check it out, I'll put a link for you in the description down below. Okay, so for the new hardware, we're going to be rocking the Prime Z390A motherboard, which does naturally have white accents with some RGB. Uh, but since our current motherboard has like a little OLED screen on it with like temperatures and stuff, we're going to be losing that with this. So I'm going to be using the Kraken Z360, which has a completely customizable little display on here. You can show like graphics, temperatures, all that stuff real time. And then obviously the eye candy with the white 2080 Ti. Let's do it. Well, before we break down the old PC, I was hoping this would have been downloaded in time. I wanted to check out the new uh, flight simulator. I feel like that would be really sick for benchmarks and stuff. But for the past like 30 minutes, it's been stuck at 87.68 gigs, which apparently is a common issue. But while we wait for that to kind of, you know, restart, uh, just to kind of show you what we had going on before, if this could focus, Again, there's nothing wrong with this PC. I just wanted to visually kind of upgrade it with an all-white GPU, which would look really, really nice. And if you remember when I first built this last year, the current motherboard I have actually... Hey, let's let's just not work autofocus. The current motherboard I have is actually custom painted white. But I've had some very, very strange issues with this. Not related to the paint job. So I just wanted to get a new kind of motherboard to avoid those issues. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so I have a very strange issue with the compatibility of the motherboard and my Lassie 2 big external hard drive. It's 16 gigabytes, I have it over here, it's plugged in and it backs up all my video files and stuff. But just for some strange reason, whenever that's plugged in to the PC and I turn it on, it wants to just override my NVMe drive or an SSD and it tries to boot from there every single time, even though in the BIOS I have it configured to obviously boot from my NVMe first. And it always says GPT header corruption. So I have to go in, override it again, and then boot just manually from the NVMe drive. But it's been doing this every single time. And I looked it up online and it's actually a pretty common issue for whatever reason. So it's very annoying. And I knew it was that because whenever I unplug the drive and then reboot the PC, it boots up fine. So there's just weird compatibility issues with my external hard drive. So you go over to boot. It's still the number one boot option, which is my NVMe drive. So I have to go in, override it again, press that, and then we'll boot. I just don't get it.
All right, moment of truth. I didn't manage any of the cables in behind. I'm hoping everything turns on as it should. Fan one, fan two, fan three, but the top fans are not. That's what I was concerned about. Because with the actual Fantex frame, oh, there we go, they're going. And all the, nice. Okay, so what I was, and I'll turn those down, those are pretty loud. Uh, the main thing I was concerned about with this was since I had to swap the fans and the fan frames that I had to give the RGB like halo around the fans, I needed to upgrade to the 140s because the previous one was a two, was a 360 rad, so it was three 120s. This is a 280, so I had to get bigger fans as well as the bigger fan frames. Thankfully, I had those in my storage. But then it, when it came to connecting everything, it just gets very confusing with all the different, uh, the Fantex plugs, making sure that goes in with the actual fans and then syncing it to the digital RGB on the case for Fantex. Okay, okay, we're good, we're good. All right, just powered it on. So getting devices ready. Come on. Boot, boot, boot. Listen, as long as I can boot this without the GPT corruption header, We'll be good. Come on. Still getting ready. Still getting ready. Yes. The time's off, but that's not a big deal. This is just looking super nice. I'll have to go through and manage some of the cables and stuff now. But man, loving that all white GPU. And now I can go in and configure the uh, AIO and stuff. As you can see, it has the temp right there on it. This is just super nice, but I'm hungry. All right, so I'm running out to grab a bite to eat and a coffee and possibly a haircut, time permitting. What time is it? It's like not even three yet. So yeah, I got a lot of time today. Uh, PC is coming out good so far. Sorry if the exposure is all messed up in here. Uh, but I also want to take a second to appreciate the biker shirt in front of me. The back of it reads, whiskey not for wimps. Not whiskey isn't for wimps. Whiskey not for wimps. That's, is that like his personal saying, you think? Just... Whiskey not for wimps. All right. Well, that was a massive fail because the coffee place closes at 1 p.m. And the barbershop wasn't open, so I was just able to grab some lunch. Um, what's the point of even vlogging? I don't know. <laughs> All right, so I'm not gonna make this a vlog about food, but I'm very interested because I ordered a BLT, but the place I ordered it from was like, vegan and like gluten-free and stuff instead of bacon it's coconut bacon so it's coconut it tastes like bacon very interesting to see how this tastes wow it literally tastes exactly like bacon very surprised good stuff like if i didn't know it was coconut i wouldn't know it was coconut you know what i'm saying so in terms of an actual performance upgrade that we're going to be getting now with the white 2080 ti it's not huge but it does make it a bit easier out of the box to get more out of it i know the uh the boosted power target is 300 watts and with that you get up to 1770 megahertz for the clock speed versus the 1665 megahertz on the stock edition so in reality you're probably going to get what like an extra five fps but still that could make a difference in some games and titles depending on what resolution you're playing at uh, but it is a boost and i know it might seem you know stupid because it's not that complicated but i'm gonna chalk it up as a personal win because you just have no idea how uh, bad i thought this was gonna end up in terms of the fantex fan frames because just with the actual fantex neon light strip i have inside the actual fantex light strip that's integrated into the actual case and then, you know, like I said, with the fan frames, having them all synced and hooked up properly and daisy chained, I thought I was going to miss something or not have something hooked up. Uh, but thankfully, everything was good to go. So when I plugged it in, it was all synced automatically. And then again, with the front of the Fantex case is the uh, little button pretty much. So you can control all the lighting and switch it up. But I thought for sure... I was gonna miss something and then it would all just be thrown off, you know? It's like Christmas lights. When one of the lights is out, then nothing works. I thought for sure it was gonna be like that, but thankfully, that wasn't the case. All right, so I haven't used cam software probably since 
well, like 2018 and it's definitely improved just downloaded it for the AIO it looks very clean a lot more user friendly uh, but going through under lighting LCD display yes and here's where we can completely configure everything so right here is the radial radial fill which is the CPU reading um, if you go up top here CPU temperatures oh there's a, there's a decent amount so the first one is GIF so if you wanted to load a GIF up there Something with my logo, maybe I could put that on. Now it's just like a little stock one. Um, dual infographic, okay, has both CPU and GPU temps, which is pretty useful. And then you can go in. Obviously, if I want to change the background, I could have it white. Uh, reading, let's just make black. Logo, we'll also do black. Uh, visualization, can you go like red? Okay, so for a Jeep CPU, let's just make it like let's just make them both blue. Okay. And yeah, so very easy to customize, okay? Then you have the CPU temp. And I think with this, yeah, so okay. So for the two visualization colors, you could like have like a gradient effect going on. Uh, CPU, liquid temp, the GPU, uh, CPU load, clock speed, GPU. Oh, there's carousel effect. All right, what's this now? This looks kind of like the stock effect pretty much. Yeah, so I guess like the stock effect to the actual carousel. Um, tai Chi. Tai Chi is kind of like the... It's kind of like their old logo or their, their old kind of infinity sort of mirror on the AIO. Which I assumed they would have had in here, but I guess not. Because then the last effect, Spectrum Wave, which is just like an RGB ring around it. I could have sworn somewhere I saw an effect where it was... Like the infinity mirror from their old AIOs, but as oh maybe it was a gift someone made. I don't know. I don't know. But I, I like the Tai Chi effect. That looks pretty cool. If I could put my logo in the middle, maybe. Or honestly, just keep on the dual infographic. Because that's very, very useful. Nice. Very easy to configure, too. Gotta give props to NZXT for making their software miles, miles better. Because that's the reason why I stopped using NZXT. Um, I got rid of their old AIO because the cam was just constantly having issues. And then I used the deep cool coolers for the past two years now. And now I'm back to NZXT. All right, guys. So I think at this point, that should pretty much wrap it up. Um, again, I could have done this, you know, on my own. But I figured, you know, why not just do a vlog, bring you guys along with me. I don't vlog enough. and I know people do like it every now and then. So I figured let's just make a quick little video about it. And I want to hear your thoughts. A few things. Do you like the new microphone? Does it sound good? Do you like the new PC? You know, visually, aesthetically, do you dig the new hardware upgrades? Uh, let's see. Do you Have you ever had coconut bacon? I want to know all your thoughts unfiltered down below. Well, don't do unfiltered. You know, be nice at the same time. And uh, if you want to check anything out from this video, I'll put it all in the description uh, in case you want to, you know, pick it up yourself. Well, I'm Random Frank P. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good day.